to start you off, I uh, have a couple of Halloween jokes. You're going to need these during the next week. Uh, also, you are welcome to wear a costume next week. Uh, I think, uh, are we all wearing costumes? I'm wearing costumes. Emily's wearing costumes. Maya's going to wear costumes. Maybe? Okay. All right. Well, there will be costumes, and we'd love to have you in costume also. It's a good chance to amortize that costume, you know, so you can use it on more than one night. All right. Uh, so we've got a couple jokes here. Name some of the werewolf cousins. Werewolf cousins. The what wolves and the why wolves. What kind of witch hangs out on the beach? Sandwich. Yes, very good. Okay. Hey, terrific. We're going to start off with uh, Beat Prairie here this evening. Uh, where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Okay. Come on up and we'll get you set up. And after that, we get some uh, poetry from Joe. You don't want those jokes, huh? Okay. Oh, yeah. Right. Never mind. I, I got enough jokes for my guitar. <laughs> Sorry. No trumpet this week. He's going back to the guitar. store somewhere in the wilds of Florida. Quick check. Is that coming out of the... Whoa! Welcome to the feedback. Damn. Oh, now this just started. Okay. I moved to Iowa from, from the magic Florida city of Orlando, December 2007. And uh, it was the coldest, iciest, weirdest, wet, frozen winter in history in Iowa. Nobody was ready for it. You think I was? I wrote this song. I wrote this song about Iowa winter. I, if, uh, if I drop everything and change keys, well, don't worry, I can't sing anyway. Sorry, I'm not a singer-songwriter and just only mostly a songwriter.
old cold crow, big black bird. It's old cold crow, he's a big black bird. Sing the scariest song you ever heard. Whether this severe make a young dog old, whether this severe make a young dog old this time of year sunshine is cold that's about sunshine is cold i mean everything is cold so thank you thank you that sounds wonderful appreciate it thanks for being here i'm beat prairie by choice not by name anyway look for a joining acts later. Uh, this song is uh, a true love song about uh, in, about true love gone wrong. I mean sick wrong. Okay. Hope you like it. Hope it's not too mean. I want to tell you a story about Mary Lou. Kind of a woman make a fool of you. Give a young man, <laughs> she make a young man grow. Give an old man pain. Way she took my money was a crying shame. Mary Lou, she took my diamond ring. Mary Lou, she took my watch and chain. Mary Lou, she took the key to my Cadillac car. Jumped in my caddy and she drove it far. She drove out west around Kalamazoo, making her a living off a fool like you. Got a rich old man, had a couple of kids, greased that lizard till he flipped his lid. Mary Lou, she took my diamond ring. Mary Lou, she took my watch and chain. Mary Lou, she took the key to my Cadillac car, jumped in my caddy and she drove it far. Well, she came back into town about a week ago Told me she was sorry she had hurt me so I had a 55 four and a two dollar bill Way she took that man and gave me a chill Mary Lou, she took my diamond ring Mary Lou, she took my watch and chain Mary Lou, she took the key to my Cadillac car Jumped in my kitty and she drove it far Real long ending on that. That's about Mary Lou. I'm sure it's a true story. I know it happened. It didn't happen to me, but that's the way I heard it on the radio. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, I've, I've, my last song, I'll just do a, another uh, true love song gone bad. Oh, my. No, I won't. I'm going to do the coffee coffee house song that's it this song is named coffee time i don't know i don't remember who wrote it it's a wonderful song uh, about coffee time coffee time my dreamy friend it's coffee time we have a little jazz and rhyme have a cup of coffee like to show a little coffee house I know where all them Elite artists go have a cup of coffee greeting time whoops greeting time music box keeping time don't just meet me there I want you to beat me there 
put your face in a place that's where I'll be. Okay, that's three for me about the coffee house down at Uptown Bills, where all the Eli artists go. Thank you very much. You gonna pick that up at the end, or? All right. Um, Helping us out tonight, Emily and Maya. I'll give them a little round of applause. Uh, Emily or Maya is also doing a survey for her government class, so she may ask you to fill out a brief three questions, right? Three question survey this evening. And um, have you got some responses yet? Or yeah. okay, all right. There are more, potentially more. All right, Tim looks like he's ready. Okay, all right. Uh, next we've got Joe, who's uh, bringing some poetry to us tonight. So, and the cranes, why are there so many cranes here? Some of you may have been here uh, last week or maybe even have seen the show, but we did a, a play called A Thousand Cranes based on the story of Sadako, the little children's story about the girl who uh, was exposed to uh, radiation from the atomic bomb in Hiroshima and ultimately dies of leukemia. And along the way, she hears this Japanese folktale that if she folds a thousand cranes, uh, she can have a wish, and her wish was to live. Well, she died, but her friends and classmates got together and folded the rest of the cranes, and then they built a memorial in her honor that's in uh, Hiroshima. And there are similar ones in the U.S. The closest one I can think of is in uh, Seattle. All right, Joe. Normally I, normally I stand, but I'll have to sit. Um, I twisted my ankle last Friday, so. <laughs> That's Friday the 14th for you. There. But eh, feels a lot better than it was Friday night, so hey, progress. So anyway, my name is Joe Westlink. I am a lifelong Iowan, but I moved here to Iowa City a year ago, so. I guess you could say I'm still kind of sort of new, like sort of new tires on a, on a car. But um, anyway, so uh, I got a couple poems to, uh, to recite. I think this is the right, the right word I want. Or, or, uh, or maybe I sound too artsy with that word. But anyway, um, this first poem, now it's not, it's not related to the, the prior performer. This is actually something I came up with one day when I was at Lucky's Market, and I saw this guy with a black cowboy hat, a purple sash around his around said hat, and a poncho. I am not kidding. I am not. It was... So I figured, hmm. And he, and he actually did have a guitar with him, too. So I wondered, huh, what could this guy be like? So, so I just wrote a poem and just, oh... Left it and uh, came back to it today, but oh well. So um, this poem's called The Drifter. <clears throat> he strums on his guitar as the thunder drums 
loudly on this hot summer night, and just as a bolt of lightning strikes the earth, he lets out a low hum from his throat as his hands morph his strum into a melancholy ballard, uh, ballad that would make Zeus weep in agony for the drifter. For the drifter has had a long and rough life, and his music tells his story. He tips his black cowboy hat as the first drops of rain greet said hat with a wet kiss. But he doesn't mind, for he has his lucky poncho to keep him dry. And on his hat is his lucky purple sash that warmly embraces his hat like a child hugging his mother's leg on that first day of school and not wanting to go to class. Upon looking at the purple sash, one must ponder and wonder, where did he get this sash that, that doesn't match with the all-black um, attire? Was it a dear friend that bestowed this sash to him to remind him about moving forward through the adverse melody known as life. A past love who whispered sweet nuffins to his ear like sweet Juliet on, on those warm, on those cold nights when the stars shine with a twinkle of joy as the star-crossed lovers enjoy the scene of shooting stars before them. Or could it be like the battle-worn hat the sash of royalty is a family heirloom that was passed down from generation to generation. And if that is the case, what kind of stories could it tell? To those who desire to be told a tale of such wondrous scale that it would place Paul Bunyan's tall tale to shame. But will our unknown wandering bard ever tell, tell this tale in one of his lyrical works? No, he won't tell this tale at this time as a small, playful grin escapes his normally stoic poker face. But he does have a better tale to tell than that silly, than that silly old sash on his 10-gallon hat. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, let's see, I have... Huh. I have one more. Just takes a second to find it. Ah, here it is. Uh, this was a poem I actually wrote um, some time back. I am now revisiting this poem for the first time since that last time I wrote, worked on it. So, <laughs> well, here it goes. Uh, it's called Red Eyes. I exit the cave and a cold wave splashes me with a bold realization to my situation, a situation that never could come across, that, 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 that I never thought would come to pass as I stare at the mass of night and snow, dancing what, be, what could be their last waltz. I am at the top of the mountain of metal, but my joy is unsettled because I remember why I came to this accursed rock, and that is to tame the red-eyed man of the flame. He is of great acclaim, as he is in the Hall of Fame, but where is the fiery legend? He is nowhere to be seen. I overcame so much in this, vi in this peril of life, only to stare at this dark abyss to taunt my shattered dream. I turned to leave, but a gasp. A sudden sound breaks my train of thought. It pierces the cold night with a bold authoritarian hmm. And a sudden chill hits my soul, but not the chill that's at the top of the mountain. As I stare at two red eyes at the top of a small hill, what courage I had has fled to the warmth of the cave, if you can call the cave warmth, as the red eyes pry into my whole soul. Funny, his eyes are bright like, fl like dancing flames, yet no charcoal is required to fuel his desire. Do I dare challenge this legend, whose glare can burn any mortal that comes too close? Yes, I dare. I take one step, then two, closing the gap, ASAP. I feel my fear, I still feel fear in my rear. He stands there motionless, just staring at me, not caring for who I am. I'm just a, I'm just a number to add to his record. Was that thunder I hear? No, it is my heart colliding with my throat. It just won't leave my throat. 
We are face to face. The snow dances around us, stuttering for our confrontation on this station of ice. Oh, how I wish I was someplace like Maui or, or, or even Canada. Any, anywhere but this. Uh, yet, but, that, but serious aside, yet I don't feel the ice, for I feel nothing but flames of determination from the red-eyed man who made this mountain his home. I may lose, but I won't fail, because my determination is brighter than his. I smile. Let's dance, red eyes. End. Again, when you revisit earlier work, it's, um, you wonder, wow, what was I doing when I was writing this? <laughs> but anyway, um, I hope you have a good rest of the night. Um, and I'll well, tip your waitress, but uh, that, that's been overused. <laughs> All right, thank you, Joe. Why don't we have Maya come up and uh, um, pick the winners for the drawing. Okay, so the first book is The Kitchen God's Wife by Amy Tan, who is apparently in a band with Stephen King, as Tom was just telling me. And that will go to... Will Reinig. <laughs> Sorry. And the other book is All the Wrong Questions by Lemony Snicket, who also wrote the series Unfortunate Events, which was like a staple of my childhood. And that goes to Kevin. Is there anyone else who would like to take my survey? Because I can bring it to you. Okay. All right. Carl is back. He's got some uh, comedy for us. So come on up. Look at that. He's got... Look at this. Yeah. Taking his own pictures. Yeah, let's hear it for Carl, everybody. Yeah. My own cheerleader, all right. So uh, I just got out of college, uh, yay debt. Um, but you know, for the longest time, I didn't even really get why I needed to go to college. It didn't make sense to me, because this is my job. You know, I've been doing this for seven years. I didn't think they'd offer classes and standing up in front of strangers and making an ass out of yourself, but it turns out they do, and I did pretty well, so. But like I said, it didn't make sense why I needed to go. That's all me and my mom argued about in high school. Back and forth. I don't want to go to college. Well, you got to go to college. I don't want to go to college. But you got to go to college. Finally, she snapped. Couldn't take it anymore. That's it. Conversation's over. You're going to college. To which I replied, Pfft. I was a teenager. I had carefully reasoned arguments. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever, talk to the hand. If you're going to talk snooty, talk to the booty, because my hand's off duty. And don't make me snap in a Z formation, head rotation, elbow, elbow, rest, rest, bitch, you got dust. <laughs> this voice has a name, and it is Amanda, and she demands your respect. Okay. Let's just be real for a minute. I do this voice better than I do my real voice. Okay. It's <laughs> going off the rails. A lot of this I just do for me. So mom says, you got to go to college. I was like, that's not fair. You can't make me go. It's my life. Yeah, perfect example. Dad never went to college, and he turned out, damn, i got to go to college. Oh, I cannot end up like that. Am I going to lose that much hair? Is my nose that big? Because he's Italian. Part I tend to leave out. So yeah, my parents hate me. How oh, they do, they hate me. They grounded me once from the house. Wasn't allowed back for two weeks. Hate me. I had to do my own diapers. Still do to this day, sometimes. Depends on what happens over the weekend. 
hate me. One time I said, I'm going to run away. They both said, finally. <laughs> nah. I dig parents, man. I admire parents and their ability to just lie and not even care. Just those big life-altering lies. Flip it up. Oh, changed your worldview forever. Enjoy that. My favorite lie that parents tell has to be, no, we love you equally. <laughs> no, you don't. You do not love your kids equally. And that is a stupid one to lie about because the kids know. The kids know. It is so painfully obvious to the kids who the favorite is. Like in my family, I was never the favorite, okay? I wasn't, I wasn't the favorite. Had to accept that a long time ago. Biggest problem is, is I'm an only child, so. <laughs> it's rough, you know? Don't know what it's like where I live. My mom used to always say to me, why can't you be more like your brother? I said, mom, I don't have a brother. She said, exactly. So that's a thinker. <laughs> So I got a lot of problems, you guys. Really? You seem like you have it all together. I haven't combed your hair in six months, but other than that, a lot of problems. I'm afraid of phobias. <laughs> Phobophobia. I'm addicted to lunch meat, but I've been trying to quit cold turkey. Yeah, I don't even need you on that one. Yeah. I like that joke so much I considered not doing it because I didn't want you guys to judge it. A lot of problems. I think my biggest day-to-day -day problem is that I don't look tough, you know? I don't, because I don't, I mean, let's face it, I look like the understudy for Eric Foreman on that 70s show. Eh, it's a niche group. Hey, Donna. Right? Now that's all you can see. Fuck it. Eric Foreman. Because I don't have that classic face, you know? I don't have that face that just says, man, I'm gonna kick your ass. What my face says is, hey, man, I'll write a poem. Oh, you better stand back. I got me some stanzas, mofo. <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe represent. Never more, motherfucker. Okay, sorry. I went a little rogue with that one. <laughs> yeah. Don't you think it's weird that everyone knows about the Secret Service? Because it's a secret, never mind. <laughs> this is. <laughs> Sometimes I can't remember whether or not I have amnesia. That's, that's funny, I don't care. I like that joke. I don't need you people. I tell you, I do believe in love at first sight. Problem is, I was looking in a mirror. Because I'm gorgeous. Oh. How do you say I have no fingers in sign language? You have no, never mind. <laughs> I am dating someone now. I know you're disappointed, but y'all wanted a slice of this cake, but you can't have it. So stop staring at my ass. Looky, but no touchy. Actually, you could probably touch my ass. It's not like I tell her, you know. She may not even care. I mean, there's not much going on back there. I may not even notice, honestly. <laughs> Sometimes, though, I wonder why I even try to date. Because with my track record, it just... Because in the past, it hasn't gone well. But so far with this one, I mean, we're always there for each other. You know? We support each other. We always try to make the other one happy. And when we're together, I can just feel how much she cares about me. And it's just so annoying. Right when they care? Ugh, God! Now, I gotta actually try? You know what kind of pressure that is? Treat me like shit. I don't even have to try. Because <laughs> no matter what, when they're nice to you, you're wrong. <laughs> Why didn't you text me back? Because I was cheating on you, okay? You're too nice. You like me too much. I don't know how to handle it, okay? Never dated someone that liked me. <laughs> Not used to it. I've dated a lot of different people. A lot of people. For a while, I was dating this deaf girl. Uh, yeah, a deaf girl, and I tried to break up with her, but she just wouldn't hear it. <laughs> Eventually, though, uh, she ended up breaking up with me because she said that I never listen. What? That's what she said. Oh, she can't hear. 
Where would we be without puns? Probably 50 years advanced, honestly. <laughs> I dated this one girl that um, we were together for a long time, but um, she broke up with me, rightfully so. Um, but I, we had a lot of problems, but I, I think our biggest problem was that we both wanted different things. Like, I eventually wanted a family with love, happiness, and laughter. And she wanted some dickweed with a horse penis. So, you know, who am I to judge? All about your priorities, right? <clears throat> I don't know, though. You know, the one I'm with now, I hope it lasts a long time, but I don't know. We're just, she's such a better person than I am that it's just not going to end well for one of us. Like, sometimes we'll just be sitting on the couch and we'll both look at each other and at the exact same time go, I don't think it's going to last much longer. Four months of that, so who knows. She's, she's a better person than I am. She's smarter than me, way smarter than me, super smart. First four times I asked her out, she said no. Because <laughs> she's smart. Oh, my. <laughs> I like that one, too. <laughs> I don't know though. I like dating though. I wish I could be one of those guys that could just get up here and complain about it. I mean, I could, but I'm trying to fill time, you know. But the worst part about dating is that it is how expensive it is. I mean, because having a girlfriend costs me a lot of money, especially since she raised her prices. All right, well, hey, listen, you guys have been adequate, and I mean that. <laughs> but I do got to get out of here, man. I got a babysitter at home, you know? I mean, I mean, I don't have any kids, but where else am I going to find a 17-year-old girl for only $4 an hour? Thanks a lot. My name's Carl Jeanette. I'll have a good night. Thank you. All right, that's Carl. We got Josh next here. Coming up. Do you want to sit tonight? Okay. So um, normally I would say something like, uh, I wrote these songs back in 1972. However, they're actually a tribute because he died two Mondays ago, Tom Petty. Um, first song is called Last Dance of Mary Jane. She grew up in Indiana town, she had a good little mama Well, she never was around, well, she grew up tall And she grew up right with the many and the boys On the many and the nights now Well, she moved down here at the age of 18 She blew the boys away, it was more than they seen And I was introduced, but the boys started growing Said to get big, but I got to keep moving on. Keep moving on. Sing a last dance of Mary Jane. One more time to kill the pain. I feel summer creeping in and I'm tired of this town again. Pigeons now on the market square, and she's singing 
in her underwear She's looking down from hotel room Cause the nightfall will be coming soon I say, oh my my, oh hell yes She got to put on that party dress And buy me a drink, sing me a song Take me as I come cause I can't stand long Singing last that's a Mary Jane One more time to kill the pain And I feel summer creeping in and I'm tired of this town again.